Yeah, so if you open up now a, a new project, so completely blank, as you can see actually with QGIS and you saw it, we've got these two phase. Here it's like where the layer is indicated, we saw that, and here it's like where you got the toolbar and the different function. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is really like to add the different layers. So I will, as we, do the, we did it previously, and you can do it with me, it's really like to add the vector layer, and the first one to add is going to be um, Zaire. So when you've got like the WGS84 which pop up, you just like click on OK because it's fine with us. And then you will have like the whole country of the year which um, which appears. So, so after once you found it and you open up like the shape file, so it appears with this like blue color, which is fine, but somehow we could think it's a big lake. So the first thing that we want to do is like to change the color of the of the country. So to do so, you just like right click on Zaire, and you're gonna go to properties. And here it's a little bit different from what you have indicated in the um, in the in the document in the tutorial, because once you open the layer properties, then you have to click on style instead of symbology. And here you've got actually everything you need like to be able to change the color of the um, of the country. So on this little part here, you've got single symbol. It means like you're going to have only one color. And we're going to see after you've got other possibilities as categorized and graduated. And this is when you want like, to give like, a different color depending on the size of the population or the number of cases. And we'll do it a bit, a bit later. But so far, what we really want to do is really basically just like, to change like, the color to, um, to have like, a color a little bit less um, blue as it is. So you just like, click on, on change. And then you're gonna select like the color you, you want to. So here I want you like to have a kind of a gray. So you just like select your gray. You click on OK, and after you can click on Apply first if you want to visualize, or if you're just like fine with it, and you just like click on OK. So that's how like you can change like the color. What we're gonna do now, it's really like to add all the different like layers. Uh, that were like, provided in the data set, so namely like villages, roads, rivers, and forests, and after we're going to exchange the symbology for all of them. Can you report more at the same time? No, you can normally you should be able to all of them at the same time. So, uh, control. And those are not way better than that school, so some of them are like really available, some of them are really available. So, okay. Thank you. 
which is like interesting to, <coughs> to notice somehow. So here I imported, and you might have like seen it before actually, I imported all the different layers, the here, villages, roads, river, forest, and actually the only thing that I can see right now, it's only, um, it's only the here, because it's just like at the top of all the layers. So basically the layer that you've got at the top, that's the one that you're gonna see, and it's gonna hide like the other layers below. So you can obviously like move it, by just like drag dragging it down, so that then actually, like your last layer of the year will be at the bottom. Also, what is interesting to notice is that QGA is going to give you like some indication about the type of the vector, whether it's a like point, whether it's a line, like for road and rivers, or whether it's a polygon, and in that case, it's going to be a square. Okay? So now we're just like, going to save this project to make sure like if everything crashes, you still have it. And you can just like save it wherever you want and call it um, <laughs> monkey box. So now if you want like to do just um, so when you see <coughs> basically you got like your whole map and then you can use like some tool to be like able like to zoom in or zoom out. We did a little bit before but you can select like this button which is like to zoom in. So basically you select it and then you're gonna drag it as a rectangle so that you're gonna just like be on the zone of study uh, of the survey that you want to see. So you can do it like from different ways. You can drag it as a rectangle. You can just like click on it once, twice, as many as you want. And if you want to zoom out, it's gonna be exactly the same way. You select like the other button, which looks like the zoom out, and you can click on it like once, twice, or the way you want it. If you want like to go back to the full view that you had at the beginning, then you just like go to this button, which is like zoom full, and by clicking on it, you're gonna once again arrive like to the view that you had before. Okay. So now if we just like go to the, to the zone that we wanted like to study, so what you can see here, you've got like behind your background is gonna be the it's gonna be the day of the country, then in green you've got like your forest, then you've got your road which are in blue, you've got your rivers in grey, and you've got your villages which has a little like um, blue dot. So now what we would like to do actually is like to be able like to change the, the symbol. So a little bit like before, we're gonna try to make something that makes sense somehow. So to have like the river uh, in gray and the road in blue is not really like standardized. We want like to change everything according to the color that we expect. So um, that's well, you do it like the way you want basically. But we can do it just like as for before for the for the roads for the Zaire. If you click on roads, then you go on properties. And then here you can like choose the color, or even you've got like some shape style. So if I want to say the road, for example, in black, I'm just like gonna select black, and then I want them to be a little bit uh, thinner than it was initially. So I can take like a, um, a width of 0 0.2, and then I will just like click on OK, and then it will put me like all my um, all my road in black. So I let you like change this for the other um, for the other layers, and just like to play a little bit around. Thank you. 
So you can like change the color, you can also change um, for the dots, for example, the type of dots, if it's a square, if it's a, a circle, <coughs> or else. Because like to do that, when you've got like your layer properties on the style, then here you've got like how it looks like. And if you just like go on change, then you can like choose like different type of dots the way you want it. You can also like, change like the border, you can like change like inside like the color. There were like other possibilities that you like just like to do the perfect font the way you want it. So now, sometimes you want to know, um, and Thomas talked to David about it, like what is the projection you're in, because you don't always like, know it sometimes. So remember, if you go to setting, here you've got like some property for the project. So if you click on it on project properties, then it will give you actually um, what you're using most of the time. So it's gonna give you like indicates you exactly like what is the projection that you're using, and you can also like change it if you want, as has been shown this morning. Now, if you want, like you realize that basically there is a layer that you're not using, and you want like to remove it, you just like make it active. You click right, and you go and remove. So when you do that, actually your layer is gonna disappear from your map, but it doesn't mean that it's gonna disappear from your folder. So most of the time when you're gonna do like a lot of GIS work, you're gonna create a lot of shape files because you always like do one way and then it doesn't work and it's not correct. Every time you do that, you're gonna create like five different files or four, like shape file, uh, DBF, etc. Basically, you're gonna remove them obviously every time because it's gonna be too messy on your map, but they're gonna stay like in your folder in your computer. So always like, remember, actually, if you don't use a file, it was just like a temporary file to remove it directly from your folder. Otherwise, you're gonna like end up with like hundreds of uh, of shape files. Okay. So if I go now, for example, so I remove it here, but um, I remove it here, Rose, but Rose is still here. So when you're gonna create like, a lot of shape files. You just like remove it from your view, but you don't remove it from your computer actually. Okay. So you say to remove from our as well. When you want to, yeah. I'm just like saying that because um, quickly, very quickly, you're gonna accumulate like a lot of files. So you want just like to be like quite organized and to clean it at a regular basis. Uh, otherwise, that's you're gonna be lost, or at least I'm pretty lost. But if you delete now the roads or rivers, then you, you, you don't have any possibility to come back. No, if I delete it from your computer, I don't have any so possibility to come back. So you keep it as a single layer, uh, layer? I mean, even at the end, you save your project and you have all the layers. Yeah. But if you, it's still better to keep uh, each single layer separately than to delete them and to keep just, just your main uh, all together. Well, it, de I mean, it depends. I mean, you can keep all of them, okay. obviously, but um, um, it's just like to have something a little bit like better organized because most of the time you create like a lot of temporary files when you do like join, union, and you just like want to get rid of those, just like not to be confused. But here, we're just like to show basically how you can like remove it from the from the layer frame, and after, well, I can obviously edit back uh, my rules and the way it was. Okay, so now um, we're like on the eight about like layer attributes. So this is what, what like Thomas presented this morning, just like a quick reminder about um, the identity feature. So basically here you've got your map with different information, here you've got a village. If you want to know exactly what's inside um, this information within the village, you just like as we did this morning, click on identify feature and then you click on your village and as it's in morning you got like the different attributes for your village. You can do the same for example if I make forest active I click on the forest and then it's gonna give me like all the information about the forest. Uh, same thing if I want now the river I make the river active and I just like click on my river and then I'm gonna have all my information about the river. You just have like to make sure like your um, your layer is active before using like this identity thingy. 
And then, so that's like one way to see like your information uh, from your special component to see what's inside. The other way, which we saw this morning as well, is just like to have an attribute table. Basically, if you take, for example, village, and then I click right, I open my attribute table, and this is like the information behind uh, just like the special view of your data. So it was about villages, you got the ID, you got the name of the village, and you got the population of each village. Okay. So now what we're going to see here is actually to, <coughs> to be able, so we decided to have like different colors, but now if we want to have like colors depending on an attribute, on a feature, um, let's say if you want to have like big dots if the population of the village is more important, if you want to have like different color for your forest depending on the type of forest, uh, then you can do it doing the symbology. So that's going to be like the part uh, under the point number nine, page uh, 15. And what we're going to be doing actually here is really, really like to take the forest layer and you've got like two types of forest and to give a different color for the two types of forest. So if I just have a look at it, so first my forest layer, I open it, and then I can see like how it looks like. I've got only like two fields, one vague n, which is a, a code, and another field which is like vague n tx, uh, which actually you got degraded when forest, or you got a like low end rate forest. And then I can decide like, to give a different color to um, to the two different ones. So to do that, it's really exactly the same as um, when we wanted to change the color of the countries I here. You just like click right, go on properties, under style, and here you're gonna see that actually you get different option. If I, I keep like single symbol, in that case I'm gonna have only one color and it's gonna be my uh, green color or whatever color you want it. Then you can have like categorize, so you have got like different categories A, B, C, D, which correspond actually to my example in that case where I've got like two categories of rainforest. Or you can also like use this option, which is graduated. We're gonna use like a bit later. In that case, it's for example, if the size, of, if the number of cases per village increase, you want to have like a different color, that's a bit like more red of your of your village. And but then it's kind of you know a ramp of color. It's not like only one single value. So in that case, you will use like graduated. So if we just like take categorize here, and we select. So first I categorize, then we have to select like our colon, the attributes that we want like to, um, to type. So on the colon you're gonna select uh, veg and tx, and then uh, you're gonna click on classify. By doing that actually, you're gonna like create like your three uh, symbol, so degraded when forest, low land when forest, and then if you don't have any information here. But sometimes you're going to have a blank, for example. <coughs> so if, like, yeah, if it hasn't been uh, coded as neither degraded or neither like low land rain forest. And after, for example, if I want to do, let's say, for degraded rain forest to do it yellow and low land rain forest to do it green, then I can just like select, make active the degraded rain forest, I double click on it, and then I can change the color to yellow. Same thing now, lowland rain forest, I want it to be a dark green, I just like double click on it, I click on change, and then I put it like to dark green. And then if I don't have in any information, either I can just like put it as completely blank, transparent, or I can decide like to put it gray when you've got like no data, so I can change it to a grayish color. Okay, so once you're happy with it, you go to color, you can do apply, and then when you do apply, you're gonna see like the difference with your on your map. And if it's fine, then you just like, click on okay. And if you want like to rechange the color, then you just like change them, you click on apply, and you can see it without like closing the window. So I'm fine with that, and then I can close the window. And you should like see something more or less like that. So now try it like with a village layer, and let's say that this time we want to um, to do it with a classification field, which is going to be like population and something more like graduated, depending on the on the size of the population, to have like 
small villages or big villages, depending on the size of the population. Your break is going to be different, but your number of observations within each category is going to be the same. So if I take here like one type and a color, and then my field column like population, and I do like classify to add like everything, and after I can like change it as like before, just like by clicking on it, uh, and just like changing the color. Mm -hmm. On the side. <laughs> yeah. So basically, if what you do, so you click uh, right on village, then you go to um, properties, and then you should have like under the tab style, that's where you're going to be able to change your color, your symbology, or anything you want. Then you always have like a different possibility. The possibility is either like single symbol categorized or graduated. Basically, single symbol is only when you, I mean, you don't have any like feature, no information about number of cases. Categorized is when you've got like something like ABCD or graduated when you've got something more continuous. In that case, if we want to represent like the population, the bigger by villages, we want something which is like graduated. So when you click on graduated, then you've got like different possibilities. The first uh, choice that you have to make is about like which feature you want to display. So this is indicated under column, and that's why under column I want like to select population. Then I can like click on symbols if I want to, um, and I can change, for example, if I didn't want like to have circle but have only um, star, then I could change it here and then I will like display only stars. And then now with my number of classes, how many like type of like information do I want to have classes? So in that case, I can say like only like three classes, and then I have to decide my mode. My mode. So it can be like either equal interval, it can be also like quantile, and, um, and then after it can be based on standard deviation, natural breaks, I don't know how he does that, or pretty breaks, I don't know how he calculates it. <laughs> Very pretty one. So, um, yeah, exactly. So, quantile is going to be, if you've got, for example, like four quantile, it's going to be like zero and 25% of the observation, 25 and 50%, 50 and 75%, etc. So, you're going to have a number of observations within each group and you're going to calculate the breaks according to that criteria. Thomas. Whereas if you would take like equal interval, it would be different, it would take like the whole range, and you would like divide like your value into like the number of categories. And if, if you choose quantiles, does it force you to have four classes? Um, no, I can have only three, for example, here, or five, or, or six. You're like the one choosing actually how many, um, how many classes you want to have. What's a class? Uh, well, a class, it's, it's like... Um, it's quantile. Not quantile. 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 So you can put like a number of breaks. Mm. Oh, of course. It's a category. It's like a five category. I'm thinking of a quartile. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's a percentage. Mm. So if you've got like four categories, mm. it's going to be like 25%. Mm. If you've got like six, it's going to be... Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. 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 So basically, you choose like well, the way you want it, and you click on classify, and then it's gonna like automatically calculate with the star because I chose the star. What is like the range of your value? So that actually you would have like three equal um, categories in terms of number of observation. If now you actually don't like really like the range that it shows, you can also like do it manually. So if I double click on it, for example, it's gonna ask me like to enter a lower lower value or upper value. There are always like, this possibility of doing like in a manual way, like the way exactly you want it, without like the computer calculating it. So then after, if I want like to change it, because I want like smaller or bigger um, symbol, according to the population size, I can just like make it active and double click on it, and then change the color accordingly. <laughs> I can change the color, I can also like change the size to three. Now for the villages where you've got medium sized population, I'm gonna do like a color a little bit um, orangey and a size a little bit bigger. So here I said like to six. 
And then for the big villages, we're gonna have like a size of nine. And the color and a bit more scary, a bit red. Okay. So once you decided all this, you always want to look a little bit how it looks like if it's more or less like what you wanted to see. So you just click on apply. And then when you click on apply, what it does, it actually like makes the changes, but at the same time, it doesn't, um, the window doesn't disappear, the window is not closed. So somehow if you decide that well, actually um, my yellow are really too small, I want to increase the size, I just like have the window already open and I can increase the size, click on OK, I'm more happy with it because now I can see my uh, yellow villages, and then you click on OK, and then all the changes are taken into account, and also uh, your window with the signs, uh, the style um, has been closed. So now we <coughs> so we did the math. We said like the project uh, according like to monkeypox. And if you want like to see a little bit how it looks like on the computer, just like going back to your um, to your folder on the tutorial two data. So I was actually this morning. Every time you've got like one layer, it corresponds to different uh, files. DBF, shapefile, um, then CHX, uh, etc., etc. And then we set everything with this like quantum JS project. So basically, this is the project which contains all the information. But the information is not contained in this file, but if you open it, it's going to link to all the shape file. So when you look at your like QGIS extension project, which is only like 28K, it's really like nothing. But what happens is actually if you close your QGIS, you open it again with monkeypox, then what it's going to be doing is going to open your QGIS and it's going to like retrieve all your shape file according to the path that was indicated initially. So if you remember well, we've got like this beautiful view that we love, we saved it. So now we can just like close everything. And then if I open it again, my monkeypox, Up. So it, it, it's being like open exactly the same way as you left it, with the same color, with the same symbol, and you don't need like to, um, to, to redo everything again. Can I ask what would happen if I, I accidentally delete the, the site of the billets, which was used in this project? If you delete it from, uh, from QGIS or from? Uh, no, from the data, from the, the, from the folder. Yeah, so that's if I accidentally delete the billets, and then I want to reopen this project, um, most of the time it's, it's not going to happen, I mean it's going to be like grey, in like, yeah, they put like it grey with an exclamation dot because saying that they can't find actually uh, your shape file. I think in the last version there is a menu where it allows you to select the missing file. Ask you please select the file that replaced this like... But if you have to limit it, then yeah. Then yeah, yeah. Cancel and it will load the missing project without yeah, because of QGIS, like the project is really just like a mirror of, of like all your information. So if you delete it, it's not going to appear anymore on your map, and there's no way you can like retrieve it. So it doesn't contain the information. Exactly. The exactly. Information exactly. So that's why if you work like from one computer to the other one, if you only take like this extension .qgis, then uh, you're gonna be screwed basically when you're gonna want like to open it on another computer. So you really have like to take all your folder with all your special information to put it over there. Is it possible to save the symbiology? Yeah, it should be. So if you go to property, um, yeah. So you got here like save style. Okay. So basically, if you do it like on a like. I mean, it can be useful if you always do like the same symbology or every week you do like the same type of map, of surveillance, etc. that you don't want like to spend like five minutes uh, like clicking on it, blah, blah. Then you just like go and you can like save the style. And then it's going to be, well, this extension folder QML. 
So if I Barbara, so I can call it village symbol. Okay, so basically what I did here, I, I set the style that we decided like we like the best. Now if I remove my uh, village and I'm going to import it, it again. Okay, so this time we don't have any more like the symbology. If you click on it and you do load style, uh, you import it, and once again, directly, like it gives you like everything uh, back the way it was. There was a question about the labels. Yeah. Whether it's possible to edit, select, for instance, number of decimals automatically or not? Um, after the labels, actually, you can edit them uh, directly. Not automatically. No, I don't think so. Because I didn't remember. Yeah. I haven't seen it, I wouldn't know how. I think it's only manual. Yeah. So yeah, what you can see by default is just like put like all this decimal. Also, like the label, if you see, for example, your yellow star here. So the range is just like your indication of your lower bond, your upper band, bond. And then you get a label associated to it, and the label by default is the same as the range. But I can decide that actually I want, I don't know, to put like zero instead of like 48. So you just like modify it. Um, just like by hand, removing like all the um, all the um, all the decimal, and then you can see like on your layer here, you actually have like this new label of zero like to uh, three hundred and forty three, which is like really useful. Not that much here because we don't really mind if it's uh, if it's zero or forty eight. But then when you export your map, somehow you want to have like nicer la la labels, so it's a bit nicer actually to have um, something like that. Then you don't change the values, and you just change the label. Exactly, yeah. The values stay the Okay, so now what we want to do, so if you look at your, at your uh, village attribute table, and we say what we have as information, it's only like ID, the name of the village, and then you've got the population. So it's nice, but they also like did a survey, and actually the survey that I did was a health survey where they were like counting the number of monkeypox cases um, that was observed over a two year period. So now what we would like to do is actually to be able like, to join this um, result of the survey to the village so that we would have like, the number or the rate of uh, disease uh, per village. So to do that, um, well, you should be more or less like, able now to do it because the idea is just like, to import the data set as we saw this morning and then to join it to the village shape file. Then once you do it, then you want to uh, save a new shape file because otherwise your journey is just like virtual and to create this new like shape file which is like village, uh, village else. And after you're gonna be able to have the symbology not depending on the population but depending on the rate of the disease. Okay, so the first step will be like to import uh, the data set. So uh, how do I do that? Yeah. Add the layer, mm -hmm. then I'm going to go on browse. Then here, what do I do? Okay, and I've got a PDF here. You have two. Okay. So I imported like the PDF, and we might want like, to have a look at it to see like what's inside. Mm -hmm. ah. Okay, so here, now that's uh, my attribute table, so you want to open it and to see, well, I've got ID, I've got a village code somehow, I've got a number of cases, 
and then I've got if I like primary cases, and then you've got like some fields which are all very well explained in the table on page three, which is like number of cases the first month, and 796 the number of cases in the second six months, etc. So I let uh, you go like through that. I mean, what's interesting here, what I want to, to see is actually, okay, what field uh, do I have that I can be like the key field? So when I want to join my data, basically, I've got my data in my health table, I want to join them with my data in my village table. But I need like, to have this like, common key relating field. So here, the only thing that I can see that could work would be like ID or village code. Um, then, actually in village, I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to open the attribute table and here actually I've got like ID so if I open the two if I can at the same time okay. so here it's just like a manual like way just like to see which field I'm going to use as a key and actually here like the key to be able like to join the table is going to be like the field ID because that's the one that you have like in common between the two how, how do you, what is it both? Ah, okay, both together. Yeah, like this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. yeah, I know that it's the same, but. Okay, so now we want to join our table um, as to villages. So this is a little bit different. That's sorry about that, uh, but it's a little bit different from what you see in the, um, in the tutorial because at the end it has changed between version 1.6 and 1.7. So here what you do, you actually like click on village, you go to properties, and then you want to do a join. So you're gonna click on the tab join. When you click like on the tab join, then you're gonna join a layer. So you click as we did like this morning, and later like plus, and then you're gonna see like this window uh, opening. So basically we want like to join the layer where well, it's health, not forest. The join field is ID, the target field is ID, and then by default it's like cache join layer in virtual memory. So if I just like click on OK, then here it's going to be indicated that actually my layer are being joined. Can you click on again, please? Um, yeah. Let's try it. Let's try like on your on your own to see if it works. And after, I'm just like going to check that everything has been linked together. Okay, let's see like how it works. Okay. Okay. So here you should have now ID, name, population, and then you can see like your join with like ID, village code, etc., and uh, rate of the disease. So now you got like this, but the main thing that you have to um, to understand when you see that is. That basically it's just like a mirror, so you see like your job, but your job is only like in your QGIS software. But if you go back to your file on your computer, there is no join. So what you need to do here is like really to save your shape file as a new, this join shape file as a new one. Mm -hmm. So that's why you just like click right on it and you do save as. Mm -hmm. And then you go on browse and we're gonna call it, I think it did village, village health. No. Okay. okay. Because if we don't read, then when you close, you lost this table that you have Yeah. Okay. It's this a shock. Shock. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come yeah, village health. And then after, I need like, to import my new shape file into my computer. So if I import it, I just like go on village health. I import it as we did like before. And here we go. You've got like now, you've got like your village health, your shape file. If I look at my attribute table, then I've got like exactly everything is perfect. So new shape file, it's not a drawing, it's just like a, a true one. So I can just like now, I don't care about my head. So I can remove this file. And I can also like remove village because I don't use it anymore. So now if I want like to have again like the symbology that I had before, I just like go on layer property, style, 
as I did it again, or because um, we've all been very clever, we'll accept the style, and you're gonna load it again. Oh, you want like to highlight the villages where you've got a high rate of the disease. So the next step is like, to change the symbology so that you would like see which villages have like the highest rate of disease. So I'll let you do that. Hello? Uh, yeah. <laughs> when you build, so to so know like to tell like the category, you build like this field. If you explore your data set, you're gonna see there is this field called rate. So it's like the number of cases per population. So that's the field that you're gonna be using, which um, is the number of cases per population, to be able like to highlight the kind of cases that have like the highest rate of the disease. So to do that, we go like on properties, style, and then once again we build like different possibilities here, single symbol, categorized, and graduated. So if I go like for a rate, um, and I don't think like correctly, then I, I put like categorize, and I put like the rate, what I'm gonna see, it's actually like all the single value because we don't think in terms of, uh, of increase in, uh, in the rate. So if I don't choose like, the correct um, possibility here, I'm gonna have like, something weird at the end, which basically every time you've got a value for a rate, you've got one category. So that's not what we want. What we want is something with some kind of graduation. And then my colon, so my field, which I'm gonna be um, using for symbology, is rate of the disease. So I select it, then I'm done with the star, and I'd rather have like something more conservative and to take a circle. Mm -hmm. And then I want like different categories, so I think I'll put it initially here five, no? Mm -hmm. Let's say five categories. And then after, well, you also want to decide like what kind of mode you want. I mean, it really depends on your data. Do you want like something where you've got the same number of observations in each category? Do you want like equal interval? It's, um, it's really like up to you, like the way you want to display your information. But as been shown before, it, has, it does have an influence on the interpretation by the people. Because if you think about it, and let's say like you've got a distribution with a lot of like small rate of the disease and a couple like high rate of the disease, and I do quantile, somehow I'm gonna have like high value of the rate mixed with like medium value of the rate. Whereas if I do equal interval, it wouldn't happen. So I mean, it has been, it has like to be like a uh, thing uh, throughout before you choose it. So yeah, I, cho I chose quantile, but actually it would have been maybe more clever. There is to no rules. Huh? I don't know. There is no, uh, in the literature, rules uh, how to make things, you know, to make yeah. it comparable with other. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that there's like any rule, not that I'm aware of, but I, I just like, think it depends on the shape of your, of your data, of your distribution. So I guess if you have a distribution which is like quite uh, homogeneous, like even like uniform, I mean you can do like quantile or actually even um, even equal interval. But if you got something like very screwed, somehow you don't want like, to take quantile, do you? Why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. I, th I think that many people say that the quantiles at least show the distribution of your data because you take mm. different mm -hmm. proportions, the categories with the same proportion of observation in each break. But it's true that sometimes the quantiles, when the distribution are a bit uh, strange, they, they don't want, they don't, they don't work either. So I think that the best thing is to check um, your map and see really how it looks like. And if it is able to transmit the information that you want to transmit. But in principle, the quantiles respect the distribution of your data. So it's not a bad it's not a bad um, so Five classes, quantile, and once again, if I want like, to give a color, somehow, let's say, from um, like really um, light to dark orange, and then I, I click on classify, then by deep, I'm gonna have like all my categories of my rate of the disease. So basically, here, 20% of my data is gonna be between like 0 and 0 0.04. Um, then 20 to 40 percent of my observation between 0 0.04 and 3.78, etc., etc. So after after I, I did that, actually, I can like change it like the way I prefer it. 
So let's say like if I've got nearly like a rate of the disease very low, I want like to stay with the same. Then if I've got a rate of the disease a little bit bigger, then I'm going to increase the size. Very happy with that. Um, so once you're what? very happy, then I mean you can like save the style if you think you're gonna use it again. Uh, if you don't think you're gonna use it again, you don't need to, to save it. But let's say here we want to save it in case. So uh, so to save it, uh, it's um, you go like on this like save style, and you just like, give it like the, the name that you want. We're happy with that, and then you can click on OK. So once you have that, somehow, I mean, why do you do that? It's really like to be able to identify um, cases with like high rate of the disease. So then you go back to your map, and you can like look more or less at it. Um, so here we did quanta. It might not have been like the best idea actually, because if I really want like to see like really high high rate of the disease, somehow. My highest rate is between like 16 and 112. And let's say I wanted like, to be able to identify like a value like over 50 or, or whatnot. Here, my map, if I look at it, actually I can't say much because somehow it looks like you've got the like, cases everywhere and all my cases are kind of, um, you cannot be. So we can try to change it to something. If I do equal interval now, ah, damn it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's funny, yeah. That's really stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so because here yeah, I have like so manually I'm like changing like the size of my phone. I never of my dots. Um, in other software, you could do it like automatically, and somehow here it doesn't exist. Which uh, really proportional to the. So here, one, just like one, so, by doing like a different like way, like with equal interval, then somehow what we can see is a different picture, and and what we have like the very high rate of the disease are like more focused in this region. And then we've got a couple as well in the forest next to the river. Like our village, which were like big village in terms of population, if you go back to your symbology from, uh, from before, you can see that actually now um, they don't represent much uh, in, terms of, um, in terms of rate of the disease. So it's just to give you information. To see that again, so here it's like the rate of the disease. And let's say I want to see like my population. I'm just like, going to import my village file. Again, so if I import my village file, and then I want like to do a symbology, like the same as we had before for the population. Mm -hmm. uh, because you need another um, table to because you have the population in your. Uh, yeah, so I could I could change it um, of my village uh, health uh, shape file. I could do it as well here, like the. Point of it is just like this. I can. Have a boat at the same time. Yeah, I okay. click it. I unclick it. Okay. Up. So like this, I can see like here actually. Well, it's here that it's focused like the rate of the disease. If now I look at my file with the population, I just like click on it and I just like remove this one, and yes. I can see that actually I've got like big cities here, big cities there, mm -hmm. and at the end they don't really. Um, it's not like where you've got like the highest rate of the disease. So it's just like to play around with your information. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? No, I was wondering whether you could have a transparent circle that would represent the size. Yeah, you could do and that. You have a color that represents the weight. Ah, uh, yeah, to have like two uh, two mm -hmm. symbols at the same time. Um, whether that's the same question you ask? Um, I don't think we can with uh. Mm -hmm. you can. Yeah, because in the mm -hmm. you get like more field. Mm -hmm. um, so you can do like normalization, etc., etc. With quantum, it's like pretty basic for that. But if it was transparent, 
Like one of them was had had some sound. You're, 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 oh, you you're do, both, yeah, or you yeah. like, yeah, yeah, you mean both like twice, like a shape, um, yeah. 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 No, you're working twice in the same shape, right? Yeah, so yeah. just make one kind of sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the big size of it was gorgeous. And then the color would be the next one. Yeah, but somehow it should have, it should like overlay like perfectly, you know? Sure, And it's not gonna... It might though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah you could do it that way, right? Well, with the flavors. In principle, yes, you could have like the population in transparent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the size of the thing is your population. And the color inside yeah. is to the color for the exactly right. So if I, I mean, it would be like something like that, the property. Yeah. Uh, so we are just like. Um, no, I put like everything transparent. Can you yeah, but now it's, it's so transparent with just see the edges. I don't think it's going to be in the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the same. Yeah. If it's 100 percent transparent, then you it's invisible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I can't have oh that's annoying. No, you can. <laughs> okay, I'll find out it's uh, well, you should be able to see the top, simple Well, they should, I'm sure there is a way. Voila. Uh, okay. Um, so, now, if you want like, to write this further, but you can do it like during the coffee break. Um, you can do exactly the same with the province data, which is like more or less what we did just like right now. But it's just like to merge the province shape file with some information from the GPS file, and then to uh, display the information with different colors depending on um, the size of the, of the province. And then you can add label to it. But so far, we're going to skip it for now, and we're just like going to finish which is the question will be for going to the coffee break. But then if you want to do it a little bit later, that's fine. OK, so if you go back to page uh, 20, 23, <coughs> so it's about like selecting data. So we, we've seen like some of it uh, already. But it's just like to give you like the overview of like to select data, you can do it like from two different ways, mainly for this tutorial. The first way is just like using the cursor as we saw it like before, but also like doing data query as we saw it before. But just as a reminder, then you can uh, to select data, so it's gonna be like this little button here, and you can like say select it different ways. So if I just like click on it, for example, I'm gonna select like this um, village. Okay. Yeah, so basically you just like, click on it, then what I did, you have to make like, the village active, and then you click on the village that you want to select. Uh, we've, done, we've done that before, and actually if you open your attribute table, then you're going to see that your village has been selected. After, if you just like, click here on this little, um, little arrow on the right, then you've got a different way that you can do your selection. You can do a selection by rectangle, select a single feature, select feature by polygon, etc., etc. So if I do like select single feature, that's what I did with my village, okay? Then now if I do like select feature by rectangle, then I can just like drag it like this and select all my villages with a rectangle. Now I can also do it like by polygon. So instead of having like something really rectangle, rectangle. So I just like go like this, and I'm gonna draw a polygon of exactly like what I want to um, to select. Um, after I need to close to close it, you just like click right on your on your mouse, and then I selected like my um, villages within uh, my polygon. And then the last thing, yeah. So you can do also by freehand, which is like quite useful. So same thing, you just like go on your little arrow, select freehand. And then you click on it, and you just like do um, 
Well, we can't see very well, but... Um, it's like it's good Hmm? <laughs> yeah, it just, you oh, see yeah, yeah. it or not? Yeah. You see? I can do a mess like that. And then um, when you release it, then you select it like a couple of villages. Okay? And then the last thing is like by radius as well. So this time instead of having a rectangle or whatnot, you just like select a radius. And then it's gonna uh, select like all your villages within the, um, within the radius. It's, uh, it's really useful actually to have like, these different options. But after that, they don't say, no? You select and then when you. How you can keep on. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. yeah, basically here I selected like a couple of villages. If I look at my data set, I do open attribute yeah, table, no, 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 you see like the ones. Yeah, yeah, and if I want like to save them, I can always like go on click right, save selection as. And then I'm going to create a new shape file of only my selected features. So we do that like the second party for us this afternoon. We do it. <laughs> So when you want like to deselect everything, you just like, click on deselect a uh, feature from all layer, and then we are back to normal. Okay. Uh, then the other thing that we want to do is like, to do a selection depending on some attributes. Let's say that we want to select only the villages where you've got um, at least one case of chicken pox. Uh, so the case of chicken pox, it's actually, if you open the attribute layer here, it's going to be um, this like N, V, Z, V, etc., IGN. Um, so that's uh, actually like the number of chicken pox cases inside the village. Mm -hmm. But I want like, to select like my villages with at least one case of chicken pox. I can do it like really simple in a way. I just like, click here. I order everything. And after I'm just like, going to go and make a mistake. And select like all my villages like that. And then you can copy and go in the Excel file, or yeah, you can do that as well. So we'll see that after. But you've got uh, this. Once you copy, copy selected row to clipboard, and after you click on that, and after you open your Excel file. So if I do that, but I'm gonna change that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I wanted to see it a bit better. Uh, so open attribute table. So I'm just going to go back to a view where we can see like the village a little bit. Uh, Okay, so as I said, we're going like, to open your attribute table and we want to select like other villages where we've got at least one case of chicken pox. You can order your data in your column and select like just like click on the row and just like going down, 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 etc. That's one possibility, which is a little bit um, dirty. Uh, possibility which is nicer, it's just like you open your attribute table and then you just like go on advanced search. So by doing that, you're going to open this like, search query builder, and then here you're going to be able like, to select exactly what you want. So I want like all my case of um, chicken pox, so I just like, select it. Then you can click on sample or all, it's going to give you like all the value which are like under this field of chicken pox. Okay? And then I want to select only like the villages where I've got at least one case. So I'm just going to double click on it. And you can see here appearing like this uh, number of chicken pox cases is greater or equal to one. Okay? Then I click on OK. And then um, you see that it will have a selected my attribute table like all these cases. Okay. I close it. And then here you can see like all my villages that have been selected which are with a case of, of chicken pox. And I can save it if I want, um, the same way as uh, shown previously, you go and save as selection. Can I let you do it and play around a little bit with the selection?
So you should have like at the end, like you should have selected like 12 pictures out of the 48. So you can see that because it looks like written here. Uh, it's also good to see. Sometimes like the selection color by default it's gonna be uh, yellow. So it can be okay or it can be depend like, on the color that you chose. So it's like here it's not really easy to see actually because we chose like colors including yellow. So let's say I want to take something really different, blue. Then actually if I go to settings, project properties, and then when I open my project properties, I click on the tab general. And then okay. So on the setting, for the properties, that general, I can like choose my selection colors. And by default, you put it as yellow, but I can decide to put it as uh, cyan, for example. Okay, okay. And then now, my selected village will appear um, towards cyan. But you can't... Uh, no, I don't think so. It's only with the color. I think the size is just according to the... To the size of the dots. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the last thing before we break for, um, for coffee, is just like to think uh, like any software. Uh, most of the things that you will see here, you will forget it like in a week or so. But uh, at least it's on video. To... It's on video. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you won't forget them after a week. Uh, you will remember forever. <laughs> but then you get like the online help. Um, well, at least for us, it's super useful. But uh, most of the time, we will forget like how you change the color, how you do that. So either like you look by yourself. Or just like remember really to go on the QGIS website, you got like some help on it. And mainly just like on Google to go on the QGIS distribution list because it's an open source so you got like many people um, asking questions and wondering how it works. We will call so, you, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <I'm not laughs> with pleasure, with pleasure. <laughs> Yeah, just like remember, like always, like to go on the help and distribution list because that's the way also like the, the, the software can evolve. It's like people asking questions, people answering, etc. Okay, so now um, you learn the basics, and we will see in the next practical how to create incidence map buffer with an example of cryptosporidium outbreak in the UK.